Hey everybody, it's me for Girly here, and today we're back with part 7 of my one pound closed loop system demo from Best Value Vex. And today's the day, it's finally arrived. Of course, I'm talking about the single most affordable and quality enhancing upgrade to any blasting system, the D Wax Sleeve. You have seen it on my Instagram feed, and we've talked about it quite a bit here already in this series and on my channel, but this is one of the most exciting upgrades for me. A D-Wax sleeve refers to the outer cylindrical portion of the materials column with a larger diameter and open top but closed bottom. This allows you to fill the sleeve with a combination of dry ice and denatured alcohol to achieve temperatures as low as, and even lower than, negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit, according to my laser thermometer. Keep in mind the listed operating temperature of the best value VAX units are negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, probably to ensure the tri-clamp seals stay in good condition. While you can certainly use the block style dry ice that is available at many grocery stores, the nugget or pellet style will be much easier to work with. Once topped off with dry ice, fill the remaining area in the sleeve with denatured alcohol. This can be found at any building materials store, often in the paint aisle. It allows the slurry of dry ice and denatured alcohol to remain liquid and at temperatures far below zero degrees. A minor tip I would like to pass along is the use of a towel or other form of insulation wrapped around your D-Wax sleeve or materials column. This helps maintain more consistent temperatures and keeps elements like the sun and heat away. I saw one extract company wrap their entire system in thermal bubble wrap, so that's another, maybe more semi-permanent solution. After topping off the D-Wax sleeve to chill the materials column, I tighten all of the tri-clamps, then place the closed loop system into the smaller orange cooler with dry ice. As a reminder, this is to encourage the solvent to quote-unquote chase the cold. Here's the reason you want to purchase nuggets of dry ice and not blocks. A 2 inch thick and 10 inch wide block of dry ice obviously won't fit right into the small opening of the D-Wax sleeve, so we have to break it up into smaller pieces. Keep in mind that the smaller you bust up the dry ice, the quicker it will sublimate. However, you also get more direct contact between the materials column and the dry ice that way, although we were using denatured alcohol to combat that issue. Just before pulling my final vac on the system, I top off the D-Wax sleeve once more with dry ice to chill the entire system. You will likely lose your vac if you pull it first, then chill the system, so wait on your vac until you are ready to blast. Sometimes I even wait until it is outside and in position, but today we will be pulling our vac inside. Remember, never blast indoors. No solvent has been released from the solvent tank yet, nor will it be inside. The valve will remain closed on the solvent tank, but I will open the valves on the closed loop system itself so we can vacuum out the steel braided solvent lines as well as the system. Just remember, do not open your solvent tank valves and doors, and do not vacuum a system with the standard vac pumps if there is solvent already in it. After topping off the system with a bit more dry ice, tightening all of the connections, and ensuring we have no solvent in our system, we are ready to pull our vacuum on our system. Since I am pulling the vac from the vapor slash recovery line on the system, I can pull the vac all the way through the materials column, as well as the liquid slash flood line, all the way to the closed valve on the solvent tank. After our vacuum is pulled on our system, we close our recovery line, turn off the pump, disconnect the line, then move the system outside to blast. Finally, we are ready to flood our materials column with our solvent, so let's open up the liquid valve and enjoy the show. As the falling solvent fades to colorless and the pressure on the system finally rises above zero PSI, I decide to close the valve on the solvent recovery tank and prepare for recovery. I'm going to sort of blow through recovery here since I have already discussed and demoed the process as part of this series, but I do want to point out a few things. First is the temperature of the D-Wax sleeve that I have already mentioned in this video. I believe the operating minimum of this laser thermometer is negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and you will see it intermittently change to the characters OL instead of an actual reading. While not 100% accurate, this just shows how cold the system is when blasting. In the future, I will show you much more accurate readings with a digital differential thermometer available from Best Value Bags. Another difference when recovering with a D-Wax sleeve is actually making a full recovery. I've heard that without warming your materials column, you will only get 85 to 95% recovery on your solvent, while heating it can result in a near 100% recovery rate. Since we are using a D-Wax sleeve with dry ice and denatured alcohol in it, we will have to empty the sleeve to achieve any sort of warmth. Fortunately, once empty, we could just refill the sleeve with warm water to encourage the final recovery. 
but keep in mind, you will not want to do this in between runs if you are doing multiple runs, as it gets messy and you will lose all of your dry ice slurry. After completing recovery, we can bring our system to 0 psi and prepare to pour and scrape. You can immediately see the difference in color between this run and the previous food grade run, and I attribute that almost entirely to the D-Wax sleeve. You could very quickly see why it is potentially one of the most important upgrades for a blasting system. I do want to note, however, that there will be a loss in overall yield while using a D-Wax sleeve. However, that is kind of exactly the point. Not to produce a smaller yield, but to refine your medicine and remove the fats, lipids, and plant waxes that would normally end up in your unpolished extract. I have heard and read comments about not de-waxing because you end up with lower yield. That line of thinking is rather bizarre to me. I would much prefer to produce a higher quality and more refined medicine, even if it is a much lower yield. People call those residuals contaminants for a reason. Since I haven't mentioned yet, this is a FMG canopy blend of trim including Alien Rift, Silver Kush, Kimbo Kush, and Grapefruit Durban. It turned out to be an excellent first D-Wax batch in this system, maintaining stability at room temperature, and was definitely an indica leaning dab. I started the purge in this chamber, but ultimately finished in one of the new upgrades from Bus Value Vax, the Advanced Line 0.9 cubic foot vacuum oven, as you have already seen on my Instagram feed. Speaking of which, make sure to follow me at Fergroli on Instagram, visit my website Fergroli.com, and of course subscribe and comment here. That's going to be it for this time. Stay tuned for a live resin grapefruit Durban run, purging in the vac oven, and other upgrades including a refrigerant scale and of course that ball valve. Thanks again to Best Value Vax and the support of all my subscribers. Until next time, good luck and grow big.